Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to uh, today's session. Today is March 18, 2014 and my name is Nelly Deutsch and I'm going to be uh, talking about ePortfolios and you're going to be creating one well starting today. Okay so uh, before the end you will have a chance to start your ePortfolio. So this is really exciting. So it's not just going to be about me talking. It's going to be about your doing today. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and um, and where do you plan to go? <laughs> Sorry. Where you're from and um, and anything else. Oh, you're here from Venezuela. That's wonderful. Because I heard that uh, some people can't get into uh, WizI venezuela because of the situation i'm so sorry about the situation i hope that things get better and um and this will give you a chance to maybe forget a little bit all right so we've got italy venezuela and we've got maria good to see you maria great to have you back we've got egypt And uh, I guess people will be coming in. All right, and Stella's here. Good to see you. I'm going to have to refresh my page, I think. Um, great. All right, so welcome back, everybody. I don't know if you were at the Spring Blog Festival. It was really exciting. And even though um, I was up for 11 hours facilitating, um, it was very rewarding. All right, and I think this is a nice continuation uh, with the ePortfolio. So let's get started because I think you got a lot of information, those of you who were there. If you were not there at the Spring Blog Festival for any reason, you can still get a certificate, believe it or not, certificate of uh, completion if you, <laughs> thank you, nice, uh, Nevis, sorry, Nevis. Um, if you watch 15 of the recordings, there are about 30, and reflect and blog. So it'll give you a chance to uh, practice blogging and you get a certificate. So uh, Maria, if you missed it, this is your chance and you can do it at your own speed. In other words, there's no time limit. Okay, so you have as much time as you want, a few months, a year. Okay, so take it, but do it, okay? Otherwise, sometimes uh, too much time is not a good thing. All right, so let's get talking about ePortfolio. What is an ePortfolio? What is it? Okay, any ideas? Good point, Hassan. Good to see you. Okay, Hassan has a nice point there. A resume, that's correct. I'm sure that uh, most everything you'll say is correct. CV, online CV, that's correct too. Abdel Hay, that's correct. Um, Monica says, gather information about how we learn. Excellent, that's a good one. Not too many people know about that. Very good. So you're all right so far. Anything else? All right, so let's get to the basics. What does the E stand for? Um, you mentioned online, but what is E? Okay, like email. Okay, it's the same thing. So ePortfolio is actually an electronic, exactly, Stella. It's an electronic and Nevis. It's an electronic portfolio. Now, portfolio is just a case, okay? A case where we put things. It used to be paper. It's a folder, exactly, as hard. Welcome. It's a folder, and this is an electronic folder, if you like, and that's where we keep things. Okay, so feel free to keep... Um, adding comments. According to Wikipedia, Wikipedia is not the best place to get information, but it's the fastest place. And they usually 
they're usually right okay in what they say so the first thing that uh, you know we might want to do is check uh, Wikipedia and then go beyond that after Wikipedia what I do generally is I go to um, scholar Google I don't know if you've heard of it uh, you might want to notice if you have a Google account especially Google Scholar okay Google Scholar is really really good that's right Nevis for quick reference and then Google Scholar okay it's also uh, a great way to get information and it's academic you get research you get everything so it's electronic portfolio known as e-portfolio with a hyphen without I mean without the dash in the middle digital portfolio or online portfolio as someone mentioned it's a collection of electronic evidence now this is important you mentioned a folder what's in the folder evidence okay now this is a pretty harsh word but I think it's really important um, what the user what you will be doing you will be collecting um, evidence or artifacts I like to call them artifacts all kinds of things that you do online or offline you can also write information about yourself like a CV evidence of things you've put together and it involves uh, the internet so you can put multimedia you can use a blog you can add hyperlinks audio video text images okay so it becomes very very rich and full of uh, multimedia uh, sometimes they require this I have helped people put together an e-portfolio to get job promotions especially universities from um, I have a friend I mean two friends who went from associate professor in the years that I've known them to a professor and then a full professor okay so um, the different levels and the ranks at universities and so on are based on these e-portfolios okay not on written portfolios but they're all online okay so it's good to have it and it involves someone mentioned this before it involves a PLE do any of you know what a PLE is because don't forget it's a collection of things that you have online so what are these things that you have online samples of whatever we want to share and make known exactly you don't put personal things of course it's a personal very good as her and um andres it's a personal learning environment exactly okay and you must have heard this a lot especially from um stephen downs he talks a lot about the ple there was a whole i think now they talk less about it but they uh it was a very popular notion especially with the the first MOOCs with George Simmons and Stephen Downs there was a lot of talk in 2008 2009 I think up to 2010 and then the word kind of disappeared we don't really use that word so much anymore but PLE is a personal learn you can also call it a professional learning environment but the two go together and a personal learning environment involves a few things and this is really important especially as it relates to blogging okay this is where your blogging abilities and I'm sure you heard if you haven't heard then you will hear if you um, go to um, the spring blog festival you'll be able to hear a lot of reflections people opened up you know one of the reasons I loved uh, by the way how many of you did uh, managed to get to the spring blog festival if you could give me a thumbs up if you were there i think stella i saw you if i'm not mistaken yes uh who else did i see monica did, i didn't see you hassan of course a few nevis okay monica was there as well in a few all right so what i liked very much about it was the fact that everybody was very open I think that people who write people who spend time writing especially public writing like with blogs uh, they do a lot of reflections and they're very open with words and if you notice everybody spoke very quickly really quickly uh, because people who uh, write publicly become very open and that's how you do it if you're interested in presenting I think uh, one way of doing it is really getting a personal learning environment blogging and then you'll see how fast you'll talk 
even in the non-native language. So it's a system that helps learners take control and manage their own learning. And this is really important in our day and age when there's a lot of information out there. And there's what's called information overload. Have you heard of informational overload? Actually, we're to blame for it, overload. In other words, our brains um, can take a lot, but when it's bombarded at us, it can get very stressful. Okay, we don't want too much information all at once because we need to rest, of course. So it gets a bit too much. Yes, Maria. Exactly, Nevis. Our students do complain too much, too much. And they're right because they have to be tested on the information. Okay, instead of using it, they need to spit it out. All right. Oh, Helena's here? Good. Hi. So uh, the personal learning environment is to set our goals. What do we want? You know, not only um, teach, not only learners or students, but also teachers who are learners. Um, what do we want? What are our goals? Okay, learning goals. And we need to manage learning, the content, and the process. Now, the process is very important because without the process, you know, we're not robots. Robots don't need the process, but we do. We need to stop every moment and reflect and enjoy the process and communicate the information and the process um, with others, okay, the process of learning. And you can do this through Web 2.0, blogs, wikis, RSS feeds, Twitter. All this was mentioned uh, at the Spring Blog Festival. And I don't know, Helena, if you were here when I mentioned talking quickly, why people talk quickly. They talked really quickly at the Spring Blog Festival. I don't know if you were here for that. Um, around independent the learner. The learner is independent. And Stephen Downs mentioned it a few times in uh, the, the sessions that he had on WizIQ in the uh, CO14 and the Moodle MOOCs. The idea that he describes it as a node, one node. Do you remember that? One node in a web of content connected to other nodes and content creation services used by other students. So it's connecting information that I have with you, and then you connect it with someone else, and that someone else connects it. So we're actually building something bigger than our, exactly as her, and that's what connectivism is about. Okay, but this is independent personal learning. Nobody can tell us it's wrong because it's right for us. And that's really important. We own the information and in how we use it. You don't have to be tested on it and you don't need to be accountable to anyone but yourself. It's yours. And the way, what you do with it is also yours. So what is the purpose of ePortfolios? Well, notice what it says here because I think it'll fit in what you heard at the uh, conference or the festival. Okay, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. You don't have to finish it. And I think you should be smiling at this point because, you know, when, when we give assignments, there's a due date, okay? And, and, and that's a bad thing because not everybody has the same pace, not because they're stupid, but because we all, you know, we, we, we want to enjoy it and our pleasures take, you know, different paths. Um, and, and that reminds me of, you know, when I did my uh, doctoral dissertation, I had to finish it quickly because it would cost me more money. So I, I rushed through it and I missed a lot of things that I, you know, I didn't enjoy it and I missed it afterwards. So it's really important to realize that it's a work in progress. It doesn't end until we end kind of thing. Okay, so it's lifelong and it goes on. Another thing is that it's reflective. Okay, we also talked about that at the conference. It's reflective. You talk to yourself. 
That's right. Exactly, Stella. It's us. It's who we are. And we're not finished. Okay? We are, we're continuing the process. Okay? We don't stop until we stop. Okay? But until then, you know, we go on so this is work in progress it's reflective we talk to ourselves we until we end love that you like that I, I was afraid that it might sound too bold um even though we all know it but we don't like to hear it and it's a showcase it's a showcase of who we are you can take your time helena you can do 10 minutes a day five minutes a day in other words because it's a work in progress you can work at your own pace so right now you have i don't know you work 12 hours in the summer you'll work less so you do a little more in the summer but a little bit at a time okay just a little bit not too much because if you work slowly you'll enjoy it much more if you work quickly you know it it's gonna go so a developmental and it is developmental e-portfolio is a record of the things that we decide we decide and nobody decides for us okay we decide what we want in there It's our work and it's a reflective that includes personal reflection on the content and what it means to us. And this is what I try to do with my students, by the way, uh, when I teach literature, whatever they read, I tell them, whatever you read, it's your reflection. It's how you see it. And you might see it completely different from somebody else, but it's what you're getting from it. Okay, so it's a personal reflection. And it also shows your achievement. So Helena, for example, if you work 12 hours teaching, that's an achievement. You should put that down in your e-portfolio. I work, I am working 12 hours, uh, did you say a day? That's hard to believe. Uh, 12 hours. Okay, so that, that's an accomplishment okay that's your achievement 12 hours i don't know if i could teach for 12 hours probably not okay so uh and then you reflect on it exactly hassan you reflect um on this is this a good thing are you happy with it maybe you know maybe just get it out okay it's uh it's therapeutic okay so but Anything that's therapeutic is wonderful. There's nothing to um, be shy about. Okay, so this is a very, very personal account of you. Now, what can you do with these e-portfolios? Well, you can do different things with them. And they really are appreciated. And they're going to be more appreciated in the future. And just imagine you can leave this uh, for your kids and family. You can even have an e-portfolio of, uh, of your way to school or your way, you know, on the subway or, or what you can't do while you're driving. So you can do it for your school. It's very relaxing, trust me. Any kind of writing is relaxing. Schools, uh, you can continue your professional development. You can do this for your job application. And of course, therapy. Okay, I mentioned this, that it's very, very therapeutic. And you don't have to write a lot. You know, people sometimes confuse quantity with quality. You don't have to write a lot. You can write 10 minutes, as I said before, and that's enough. Five minutes. But if you do it consistently, you will really find it pleasurable. And then assessment. Okay, you'll be able to assess what you do. And you'll get, of course, creditation. 
Okay, so you can also add your previous learning. I took a course, I took a spring blog festival, and then you have the certificate. I took the connecting online CO14 and you have a certificate and you can say what you did for that certificate. You didn't just get a certificate. You worked hard for the Moodle, uh, for uh, Moodle, for the Evo Moodle, Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014. You worked hard, Helena and others here. So whatever you got, you got for doing something and you learned, you developed skills. Okay, so it's really, really important. Um, LinkedIn, mm, I don't know, LinkedIn is, um, I don't know, take a look at LinkedIn. If you have a LinkedIn account, Nevis, do you have a LinkedIn account? I do, and I, I don't find it very, it is a kind, you do have, they do have e-portfolios there, but I find it very, very, uh, dry, not too exciting. Yeah, it is a social network. We're talking about a very personal learning environment, okay? And that's the e-portfolio. Now, how do you start? Well, these are different. Thank you, Andres. These are different ways. Oh, really? So you meet a lot of people. So you can write that. I met a lot of people. I mean, this these are the nodes, you know, the connectivism that um, George and Stephen talk about. So notice all of these, okay? Desire to learn. Take a look at these, okay? This PowerPoint presentation is available in the courseware for uh, Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. Edu Eleg. Eleg is fantastic. Folio Tech, Live Text. And then, of course, there's the other side. And we're going to start today, remember? We are starting today. So we've got Mahara, Maps, Passport, PebblePad, Our Campus, and TaskScreen. But we're going to be doing Mahara. Okay, today we're going to plunge into Mahara. That's wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that, Nayak. Because that's what it's all about. It's self-development. And that's why we're here. I mean, why are we here if not to, uh, to be lifelong learners? Mahara, well, that's the treat you're going to find out today, Maria. So are you ready to get started? Thumbs up if you are. If you've got questions, um, thumbs up <laughs> if you've got questions. Uh, this is the time to ask. I went through this very quickly. We have a whole month and a half of ePortfolios this month and um, in April. So you're ready? Okay. So I'm going to introduce you to a Mahara. Okay. And the Mahara happens to be my Mahara. Okay. I have a Mahara and I really like it. Um, I'm going to need to maybe uh, pretty it up a bit more, but uh, it's nice. You like the name Mahara? Oh, is it? What does it mean, Mahara? I had. It means skill. Wow, is that ever beautiful? In Arabic, wow, Mahara, wow. Because that's, that's wonderful. That's a perfect name. I, the, the people who developed it, Mahara... Uh, we're from New Zealand. Okay, and there's the link, integratingtechnology.org. Okay, that's the Mahara, and um, I'm going to take you there. No, they're from New Zealand. So maybe Mahara means something in New Zealand. I think it does. Uh, Mahara. Mahara is, first of all, open source. It's an open source e-portfolio, and it's not only an e-portfolio, it's also a social networking application. And it was created, as I said, by the government, not just anybody, the government of New Zealand. Would you believe that? The government of New Zealand. 
What does that say about New Zealand? Oh, you were in New Zealand? Were you? My daughter studied there, but I didn't go to her graduation. She did her uh, teacher certificate and... Uh, huh, but I didn't go there. <laughs> I sent my mother to go to her graduation because my mother likes to travel. It was too far. Well, it provides users with tools to create and maintain a digital portfolio of learning, social networking, and so on. And it also allows the users, and they're called users, I don't like that word, to interact with each other. Mahara Content Management System provides users with blogs notice here blogs a resume builder and this is nice because you can build your resume and it's a great way to build it you don't have to um, look for something a file manager a view creator so you can create your own resume or cv it's exactly the same isn't that exciting All right, so this is my Mahara. It's funny to say it, but that's the, uh, I don't know, if, this is definitely, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, New Zealand, but that's, uh, that's supposed to be a friendship. I had one of those, it broke. Uh, a friendship emblem. Okay, it's for friendship. It's very, very beautiful. I had one of Jay and it broke. What is this? Nellie uses it in her. What do I use? I, sorry, I missed that. The government of New Zealand developed it for the citizen. No, it's open source. Open source means that it's open to everybody and it doesn't cost anything. It's like Moodle. It's completely free. Okay, Mahara is free. So it's a personal and professional electronic portfolio i call it pep professional electronic portfolio and uh, it for all yes it for all is integrating technology for active lifelong learning no it's not for exactly maria that's why i wouldn't use desire to learn i don't i don't use anything that costs money as you know and if it does cost money you get it for free um and um that's uh, the Mahara. Okay, that's, as I said, that's the uh, the link. I'm going to take you there right now. Okay, so we're going to go a little tour. Are you ready for the tour? Yes. You paid for what? What did you pay for? Talk to me if you don't want to pay. I, okay, if you don't like paying, talk to me because I don't, I, I don't buy very much. Okay, I like to uh, share what I get for free with others. Okay, so we're gonna, you signed up, good. Oh, you signed up already? You signed up, the Mahara is free. It doesn't, it's mine, it doesn't cost anything. Okay, I'm frozen right now, so uh, I look kind of funny, uh, but I'm frozen. I'll be unfrozen in a minute. Okay, here we go. All right. So, okay, I had to um, give permission so that my Mac um, will be able to absorb everything. So what are you talking about? You had to pay for what? You don't want to pay for what? You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay for anything, but you want to get paid, don't you? But you don't have to pay. All right, so let's, um, let's go to Mahara. Remember the Mahara? is um over here okay so this is the mahara notice that i created an account i'm gonna go in i'm in as um as someone okay here it is that's nelly okay and i just got an account i can change the password if i want to and um, I can add 
a name. Okay, so I'll give it a name. Nelly Deutsch. Um, maybe I'll put Muller in the middle so I know which one because I have another account as the admin. And then I can write an introduction. Hi, I'm Nelly. Great to be here. I mean, this is just um, great to be here. You can do, you can fix this up. Notice you have an editor here, okay? A rich editor so that you can add all kinds of things. Okay, you can also put headings. Okay, headings if you want. I hope, yes. Headings or bigger. Okay, here you can put headings. Make it larger, smaller. Okay, and so on. You can also add images. Insert image. And you can also make it larger. Just like on Moodle. And it, you can also go into the HTML. Just like Moodle. It really does look like Moodle, doesn't it? Okay. Because it does behave like Moodle. And then if you want to go back, you go back. Okay. And then your web address. This is, this is your profile. Web address, personal website, town, and so on. I didn't do this yet. I'm going to do it late. Oh, they want me to do it. Oh, no. All right. So we're going to do it together. Okay. So um, what you need to do is register. And let me show you where I'll log out so that um, you can register. So the register is right here. Okay. So you register. And then we'll do this together. All right. So let me go back give you the link so you can register top right and then we'll work on it together all right so let me stop sharing okay i'm back you're going to do that dr nyack that's exactly what you're going to do you're going to create an e-portfolio on the mahara that's exactly what this session is about okay so there there's the link to the mahara go into register at the top right register and fill in all your details this is how it starts you can always edit remember you can always edit make changes you don't have to feel like you know if you write something that's it you can always make changes Okay, so let's see how fast you can register. Helena, don't go there. Don't go there. That is not Mahara. That is somebody else. That is a, a demo. If you want to get, if you want to work on your uh, e-portfolio, you don't have to go to another Mahara. Oh, institution, I choose WizIQ since um, we're on WizIQ. Ah, the institution will come later. Yeah, I have to okay it in my email box. Yeah, WizIQ is fine. But if you want to have this for your organization, I'd be happy to have to host them if you want. He asked about reason. What reason? Reason? Oh, okay, so just uh, because Nelly. <laughs> just write Nelly because Nelly said so. Just say uh, Nelly told me. And then I'll note because it's me. I'm the administrator. Okay. Um, Abdel, hi. So uh, if you say Nelly, I know that you know. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> Nevis, right, as per, okay. So you're finished? Oh, but then you're going to have to fill it in. I think you're going to have to finish. You filled in everything? Wow, you're fast. 
Wow. Uh, as hard, the difference between, oh, because the Mahara is uh, just a demo site. If you want to have your own Mahara, you can uh, get a domain, host it somewhere. It's like Moodle. Are you familiar with Moodle as hard? It's the same thing. Or uh, WordPress. What you do is you get a domain. Okay. After you get a domain, you uh, get a host. After you get a host, and you pay, right? You pay for the domain about $10 a year. For the host, you pay a little more. And then you install uh, Mahara on your own domain. Or you install Moodle. Or you install WordPress. WordPress is also open source. Okay, that's or you can also um, install Elg. What does it say? Has been notified and you will receive an email as soon as your application process. Application. Ah, okay. Uh, all right. So um, let me do that now. Okay. Let me do that now. I'm not sure why it's stuck there. Let me do that.